Yo, hello, hello, welcome back to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in this video I'm going to talk about the first chapter of the book, The Origin of Most Problems. Just go on fromsidecom slash books and then it's right here. If you click on it, it will open in a book viewer. So you can also read on your phone or tablet for example. And there you can navigate um, by swiping. On the laptop you can navigate with the left and right key. And you can even um, download the book if you just click on here. So you can read it offline. That's the cover, if you think who or what is this, um, we're gonna figure it out later, we'll get to meet these two in the middle of the book. On the first page, let me make this a bit smaller, on the first page there's a short summary about the book, it's just that there are many pro problems in this world and they have one common origin, one root cause so to speak and if this is understood from many humans then solutions will follow and once solution follow, our society will change. And yes, I know that's a very, that's an extraordinary claim, but there's also um, well-sourced evidence throughout the book to prove every point uh, which is being made in the book. So, there are six chapters. There's the story, understand, accept, get ready, fight and putting everything into perspective. I thought I'm gonna make videos about each chapter and today I'm gonna make the video about the first chapter which is the story. So the very first question of the book is what do we want? And we're gonna ask that the Trom superhero, you'll get to meet him in a second. Trom is a project that started in 2010-2011 and has created since many books and videos and even a quiz and so many tools and Trom posts memes on social networks daily. So the question is why is Trom doing all that? Why does Trom even exist? And we're gonna imagine to talk to a 10 year old because if a 10 year old kid can understand the message behind the project then basically everyone can at least in theory. So now we're gonna meet the Trom superhero. That's how he looks like. Um, he says whatever he thinks and he has no mercy for unscientific values. As you can see here, come on, there is no God, of course not. So the kid, exp uh, the Trom superhero explains to the kid that if you summarize Trom, what Trom is about in one word, he would say trade. And he puts it in one sentence and he's saying, we play a game in this world, all of us. The I have something, you have something else. And we exchange what we have with each other, which in turn creates an imbalance of power. Some have more, some have less. And this imbalance gives rise to so many problems, because if I have something that you need, then I can be bossy with you over that and manipulate you or others who need what I have. That's how it is. And if you think also about our society, you know, what is the only thing, what we're doing is just, we're trading. We're trading our time, energy, skills in a job to get money, to get what we need, to buy what we need and want. And there's just trade between um, tribes like from China to Germany, from the US to Bangladesh to this country to another country and that's what it is. So and the Trump superhero explains that now to the kid with Monopoly, he lets him play um, the game with his friends. But the thing is not everyone has the same amount of money in the beginning because Elijah's parents are rich and the kid's parents are not rich so Elijah has more in the beginning. So the Trom superhero just trying to make the point that it's like in real life, if your parents have debt, you will also own that debt and yeah, that's how it is. So after a few rounds, um, no surprise, Elijah is the richest player, the kid has almost no money, he's very poor and the other ones are um, 
cheating, they are making deals with each other to, for their own advantage and the kid is even sees no other solution than um, stealing money from the bank. So you see what the game makes with them. Um, they become abusers, charlatans and thieves. That's what the Trump superhero explains. The abuser, charlatan and thief, he calls them act and they create the crap which are the common recurring and amplifying problems. Why are there problems? Of course because bomb player or two players are super rich. The other ones are cheating and making deals with each other and the, the kid is super poor so there's a huge inequality and um, yeah, that's how the game works. So now the kid is so desperate that it even um, tries to steal money from the bank again but this time the other players see it and they put him into jail. They also say, or the rich players say, well, we're gonna take the bank to us because we are not so inclined to steal money because we already have much money. So, but what happens is that Elijah wants to build more houses and hotels and since the bank is so close to him, then he's just gonna steal and the other ones I think one of the players see it but then he just gives her a little bit money and then she doesn't say a thing anymore. And the kid as you can see is completely um, desperate, he's losing, has no money. The Trump superhero is now saying look at you guys what happened to you it's a shame you became abusers, charlatans and thieves and you created many problems or the crap. Um, you created corruption, anger, lies, deception and so on. And now the kid is like, well, I don't like this game, it's so unfair, I'm losing, I, I just don't want to play anymore. But then the Trump superhero is like, no, you stay, you play. And he's just trying to make the kid aware that um, in reality you also have no choice. Like what if you don't want to earn any money, you have no choice, how are you gonna survive. You need money to get food and shelter and the stuff that you need. So that's how cruel this game is and he just tries to make the point of there's no difference between Monopoly and the real life game. So he's proving that point with uh, the phone. He's just trying to ask or he asks the kid is that really your phone? Can you prove that? And the kid is like yes of course my parents bought it and I got all the bills and so on, but then the Trump superhero is like, well, that's just people and papers. There's no cosmic law saying that you own this phone. And the kid is like really thinking about that and starting to realize, well, it's all kind of play pretend and it's all just a game. He even starts to think about, is everything play pretend? Is everything an invention? And then the Trump superhero explains like pretty much yes. Jobs, documents, countries, and nationalities, money, laws and so forth. But he's also saying that doesn't necessarily make them useless or without a value somehow. A doctor pretends to be a doctor but she is knowledgeable enough to fix your health problems, of course. But all the other things, the label, the job, the social status, the salary, what he or she owns, that's all just invented, kind of, play pretend. So that really boggles the kid's mind and he is really thinking hard about it because he never thought about that, like can you change the game of Monopoly? And he tries to do that, he tries to give everyone the same amount of money in the beginning he tries to do draconian punishments for those who steal or cheat and he also um, comes up with more proactive approaches like those helping those in need. But what he realizes is the other ones always find ways around these rules and laws he, he came up with. He is even saying, I don't think anything works. No rules that I put in place seem to stop people from stealing, abusing others, becoming charlatans or creating cartels. 
They find loopholes in everything I do. They seem a step ahead of me. So the kid is really desperate now. He doesn't know any further. But the Trump superhero knows that, of course. And he tries to make the kid understand a very important point. The Trump superhero asks, like, who is creating these problems? And then the kid is like, everyone? And the Trump superhero, of course, it's you, humans, who create the problems. But he is just trying to make the kid aware of the game itself, which pushed them to create these problems. He introduces an analogy, um, the analogy with aging. So what he's saying is basically there are many health problems in this world today, like cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's and so on. And they are also a symptom of aging. And more and more researchers and scientists are focusing on aging as the problem. The kid doesn't understand that. He's like, everyone gets old and that's just normal. The Trump superhero explains, however, that what is normal today doesn't have to be normal in the future. And he's saying that if you were to cut your fingers 100 years ago and you got an infection, it was very likely and it was normal back then that you could die from that. And today not anymore, of course. And the point about aging is not becoming immortal. Don't get that wrong. Many people think about, oh, if you tackle aging, you they don't want to die anymore or they want to become immortal or something. But this is not the case. It's more like having a better health overall. Like imagine being 70 or 80 and you are in your health conditions when you were 40 or 50. So that's what this is about and it's not about becoming immortal also. So the Trump superhero now um, explains that here you can see the world problems and now he asks the kid, okay, what is now the origin of them or who creates these problems? And then um, the kid starts to realize it's people, of course, people create these problems. And then thinking back to Monopoly, what pushed them to create these problems and he realizes the situation, the game and finally trade, the trade game, the game of trade. And the Trump superhero is happy because the kid now finally understands. But the kid is questioning now, what do you mean by trade? What is a trade? And the Trump superhero explains well, sharing and giving something without expecting anything in return is no trade, of course. But what the problem is, is the need for trade. Like, imagine having access to everything what you need and want. Then there would be no point of trading, right? So he's saying the fact that we lack access to stuff is, is the problem. And the kid is like, okay, is all trade bad then? And the Trump superhero is like, yes, because it creates that instability of power. The Trump superhero explains that with a short story um, from when he was younger. So back then he had the latest releases of the newest movies and he used to share these with his friends. But that also put him into a powerful position because he was the one having these latest releases and it was a struggle for him to get those. So he was thinking, why should I share them for free when I struggled so much to get a hold of them? And then he started to sell them. So he started to make a small fortune out of that. And he was even then giving no movies if anyone couldn't give anything in return for that. So he started as a nice guy in the beginning, then he became a bit of a dickhead after a while and he was a complete douchebag in the end. One day when he ordered um, new, some new releases from that shady place where he got them from, he got only an empty package. An empty package was delivered with nothing inside and he was super destroyed, super um, angry also and he thought about his only option was to get a revenge. So what he did was he sold empty packages together with a friend to random people over the internet and made a lot of money out of it. 
What a shame, imagine that, selling empty packages with nothing inside and making a lot of money out of that. And a comparison now is, imagine if he wasn't a 16 year old boy with movies and DVDs, but instead a 50 year old man owning a drug company. Ponder about that. And he's just saying, that's the moral of the story. When the need for trade is present, then it transforms people into jackasses and they will create awful things. The kid wants to know now what stopped the awful behavior of the Trump superhero. And the Trump superhero is like abundance and education. The fact that the internet was more and more a thing, um, these movies could easily be shared online and people had more access to them made it irrelevant to buy them, to buy these DVDs. And the other fact was that he was part of a middle class family and had pretty much everything what he needed at that time. Um, these two things, abundance and education, made him stop doing these scams. And he is explaining now, this story is a classic example of what happens under the force of trade and it can be found underneath every human or organization in the world today that is engaging in similar actions and behaviors on a daily basis to keep their differential advantage alive and thriving, to survive or grow in this game. He summarizes, we play a game, the game of trade. We trade our labor, energy, skills, knowledge, comfort, security and so forth for our needs and wants. That's how simple it is. What we have to understand is that this is just a game and we can change it any way we want to. He is also saying, those who try to fix the world are trapped in a loop because they don't address the elephant in the room, the force, what makes people behave so badly. People don't understand that trade is the source of most problems. Trade is the force that pushes people to behave badly. They don't think bold and out of the box, or more than likely, they are not aware of this. What I really love about this book are the illustrations and the dialogues that you can see here, for example. Um, because the guy is saying he has no food for feeding, I think, yeah, for his family. So he's going to hunt some elephants to sell their tusks as ivory. And of course, if he had access to food and the stuff that he needed and feed his family and his kids, then there wouldn't be no point of hunting elephants, you know? So it is really the, the force, the game that pushes him to sell and hunt elephants. And now the Trump superhero explains, the problems on the left are created by aging, the ones on the right by trade. We currently do not know how to fix aging, but a lot of progress is being done and the most important step is happening. The awareness of what is the core problem. Yeah, as I said, more and more researchers and scientists are agreeing on that fact and they are working on it. The Trump superhero continues now, we also may not know how to check a trade, but that's not even important. The important bit is to understand that trade is the source of those problems, meaning most problems we see in the world today. He challenges you. Take any domain in this world, fishing, electronics, school, friendship, religion, terrorism, scientific research, everything, and put the microscope on any of them and at their core, you will see that the force of trade is everywhere and it influences everything, mostly in a bad way. That's the simple chain of events. The force of trade creates the bad behaviors and the bad behaviors create the problems. The god, game of trade, creates the act, the abusers, charlatans and thieves, and they create the crap, the common, recurring and amplifying problems. So, on the last page of the first chapter he's not really talking to the kid, but more to you, the reader. He's saying that he will take you on a long journey to explain you this trade thing really well and he will show you the bad and he will show you the ugly and in the end there will also be a chapter about um, the solutions, the solution part. So I hope you found that video interesting. 
Um, you know you can access all our materials on trompside.com. Trade free, of course. We don't ask for anything in return. And the next video will be about understand. Um, we will explore and discover different forms of trade. It will be very interesting. See you in the next video. Much love and take care.